Outtakes Movie Podcast. I'm Sam, and we're still going on our quest to go through every single movie ever made. And objectively rank them best to worst of all time. And I'm, of course, joined by my amazing team. Amelia, how's things? Great. Good, good. Joe, what's going on, man? Um, I was bored last week, but it's been a week. So you can imagine how bored I am now still. <laughs> so. And Jacob, what's going on, man? Um, I'm here too. Excellent. Hi. Okay, so this week, we're going back to 2002 for Disney's Treasure Planet. Now, two things before we start talking about the movie. One, make sure you've seen it yourself because we're going to be spoiling it in full. You can check it out right now over on Disney Plus now that it's out basically everywhere. Um, or even your DVD cabinet, perhaps, if you were one of the three people that ever purchased this movie. Um, and yeah, one of those people. <laughs> And I two, ha- I had this. we're going to have a look I'm pretty sure I had when them. it came out. Really? That surprises me. I, I, yeah, me and my brother watched this film a lot. I found <laughs> myself re-watching this now <laughs> that I remembered the PS2 game a lot more than the actual movie. And I didn't even own that. So... Yeah. <laughs> I don't know where my copy of it is, but it's somewhere. It exists somewhere in the world. <laughs> Collecting dust somewhere. Yeah, somewhere. <laughs> I don't need it now. I've got Disney Plus. You know but we're going to go back to the little release window, see what the world was like in 2002. We're going to start off with the hot charts, as we always do. And my God, was it the early 2000s, right? Legit. Oh, okay. Okay. Number six, the ketchup song was out. Oh, God. Fucking throwback. Oh. Primary school discos right there. <laughs> Uh, number five, S Club was singing about being alive, which is ironic because they're well and truly dead now. And number three, <laughs> got him. Jennifer Lopez was pretending to be Jenny from the block, even though she's a fucking multimillionaire. <laughs> <laughs> Over Great in nice. the world of video gaming, November was not quite what it is now. We know it now for being the big smash hit month for all the big games coming out. Wasn't really the case back in 2002, as a, only one game did come out on this day, and it was <laughs> it was a Game Boy game, and it was Gremlins Stripe vs. Gizmo. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> a spin-off game, game to Gremlins 2 came out in 2002 because that's that's where we were in the wow. early 2000s. Nostalgia wow. was high, quality was low. Speaking <laughs> of, Treasure Planet. Joe, Ooh. tell us all oh, about this movie. You know. it's, well, it's my movie. Oh, shit, it is. <laughs> it's just because he loves it so much. I was going to hand off to him. Jacob. Disgusting. <laughs> tell us all, all this about research. Treasure Planet. <laughs> right, yeah. So, Treasure Planet. Um, Disney made this, as you probably know already, but they weren't the first to remake Treasure Planet or to try and make, well, to make it into Treasure Island but in space. There were two previous ones, which is kind of strange. Well, is it kind of strange? I don't know. Anyway, so there were the two ones. First one was in 1982 and was Bulgarian. Was it called Treasure Planet? It was called The Treasure Planet. Nice. Very and this cool. one was also animated, and apparently it's just a bit weird. Like, if you if you search The Treasure Planet, it's just the poster image just looks fucking bizarre. I'm going to do it right now. Um, do it. It's, it's fucking strange. But, um, yeah, as well as that, there was also <laughs> what translates to Treasure Island in Outer Space... Nice. <laughs> which was an Italian <laughs> slash German live action TV miniseries from 1987. Oh wow! Nice. So I, I've just discovered this Bulgarian one, and I don't even know how to <laughs> describe what I'm seeing right now. It's oh, like it's very strange. It's like three humanoid characters. Two of them don't have a nose. One of them has enough nose for both of them. And then <laughs> there's these like four yellow ox, maybe rhino. And it looks like they're entirely surrounded by fire. Uh, yes. like it's very strange. That sounds you like one You wouldn't look at that and go, film. yeah, Treasure Planet. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> at all. At least like, the, the cover of, of this one, you would kind of go, okay, we've got like some pirate space adventure going on. Um, but yeah, neither of them, I'm guessing you hadn't heard of either of those nope. two? <laughs> no. No. Um, but you had heard of this one. I think that's <laughs> only because, well... You're lucky. A lot of people still probably don't know what this is. Because at the time, it wasn't the most popular. No. Um, before I get into some of its history, 
does, oh, if I tell you the budget, I want you guys to guess the worldwide box office. Okay. Oh, I, I think I know it. So, I think I know what it is, so I'm not going to say. On. The budget was $140 million. Sounds yeah. about right. Which makes it the most expensive traditional animated film. Because so the, how much the story well. going into this was that Clements and... Oh, I've got it written down. Fucking... Okay. gone. Uh, Musker. Clements and Musker. This was their like pag- passion project. Like this, is, they were pitching it to Disney yeah. for years and yeah. years and years and years and years. Yeah. And they were making all these other movies, like The Little Mermaid and everything that were like, and, and Beauty and the Beast that were smash fucking hits. And every time afterwards, they pitch this movie and then get turned down. Yep. yep. Um, it's really interesting. But famously, it didn't do very well, and was probably the very end of the Disney Renaissance because it was just all downhill from here. Yep. It potentially made some money, but I don't reckon it was anything near what Disney wanted. I think it maybe pushed the budget just enough, maybe 160 mil. Maybe maybe just Is that worldwide okay. or is that opening weekend? Worldwide. I'd say worldwide. 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 I don't know worldwide. I know the opening weekend numbers, the US one. I know how much Oh, yeah. O- opening weekend, US and Canada. I will reveal that after we do this one. Okay. Yeah. So based on those, I'm going to go even lower than that. I'm going to go like... I don't reckon it made its budget. I reckon it a hundred worldwide. Oof. Okay, Amelia. What was the budget again? One hundred and forty million. I'm gonna go one hundred and twenty. I'm gonna say it's it's under, but not. Okay. Joe and Amelia, you're right. It was under. Oh. Uh, Joe was closest. It's one hundred and nine point six million My. worldwide. Well, to be fair, because so this <coughs> this nearly put the whole kibosh on the Pirates of the Caribbean franchise, didn't it? Like I already yeah. know. I already know, like, I wasn't really interested in doing it. Um, uh, but then after this failed, like, while they were in production, he was very actively trying to just cancel the whole thing. Yeah. yeah. The, it flopped hard. Um, box office for opening weekend, US and Canada, was only 38 million. <laughs> which is brutal. Oh, so no one really wanted to watch this, Imagine. even though it was originally pitched back in 1985 pitched in like over well yeah almost 20 years um, so that makes you really so sad yeah. that though because they pitched, these guys yeah. they wanted to do it so much and everyone was telling them that it was going to be bad it was like no 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 one's going to want to go watch it like no they will they will it's going to be amazing and then no one goes and watches it like you know here like normally you hear passion project stories like oh they told me like with pulp fiction or reservoir dogs are like Oh no! And everyone said they weren't going to do it. Everyone turned me away. Or oh, Harry Potter. Everyone said that people weren't going to like it, and it's a smash hit. Everyone loves it. But with this, it makes me sad that it was actually yeah. it actually didn't do well. And the numbers oh. just weren't behind it. Yeah. Um, oh, but yeah, Ron Ron Clements and John Musker. I'm pretty sure it's Musker. It could be Muster, and I've just written it down <laughs> funny. I think it is Musker. I've, yeah. I've got a feeling it's Musker. These two have done quite a lot of other more successful yeah. Disney things. Where they would write and direct them, so I think the first their first thing was in eighty three. Haven't written down what it was, but since then the more notable ones are Great Mouse Detective, Little Mermaid one and two, Aladdin, Hercules, Aladdin. Princess and the Frog, and most recently they did Moana. Oh, they, so they were can, the Moana guys as well. <coughs> yeah, wow. so they can That's they cool. can do some stuff like they yeah. can do really popular things. But Treasure Planet was not popular. Um, so yeah, Sam, you're right. They pitched it. They say yeah, they pitched it in '85, the same time as Little Mermaid. Then again in 1989, and they said no. And then again after Aladdin came out in '92, and it was still rejected. And finally, they got a deal that they could start production after they finished up with Hercules. It was Hercules, yeah. So it didn't start till '97. Well, um, pa- I mean, there's, there's, I can't remember where I've heard this, but there was a lot of stuff. Apparently, Hercules was part of the deal. Like, Her- you've got to make Hercules and you've got to make it yeah. good. And there's yeah. a lot of theories that that about why... That's why Hercules was the way it was. That's why they had so many, like, pop culture jokes and stuff in order to try and really, really ensure that it would be a success. Mm. But, yeah, <laughs> this one just wasn't. Um yeah, so obviously we know it's an adaptation of Treasure Island. Um, what's we got here? Ah, oh, fun fact, I guess, about this is it was the first movie to be released simultaneously in IMAX and regular theatres. 
We've had yeah, IMAX yeah. for that long? Really? <coughs> Apparently, Fucking yeah. Wow. Mark? Which is... I can imagine some of the sequences in this being pretty cool in yeah. IMAX. The, the animation's pretty inconsistent, I feel, but some of the stuff is... Like, I, it didn't look very good on my TV, but it would have looked amazing on a big screen. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, I think the fact that it was... If it had been greenlit in 1985, I don't think it would have been as good as it is now. Um, no. And that's... See, or, or anything like as popular, but it wouldn't have cost as much money. See, I don't think, you know, because... One of the things... I mean, I... this With this movie, like... One of the things, I've got to give it to them, that the, the mix... 3D and 2D, don't they? And it doesn't yeah. always work. But if they did no. it in the 80s, they wouldn't have that technology to do it. So they would then exactly. have to draw and paint the backgrounds, which may have helped it a bit more. I reckon so. Like, it might have actually been better if they greenlit it, did it in the 80s, because they've had, mm. they would have had to actually do everything by hand, whereas yeah. it was relying on digital. So we would have had to... that. It may be some of the shots maybe wouldn't have been as pretty, but... They might have been pretty in a different way, a bunch of much yeah. like how, um, like well, any classic Disney is where it's all hand painted and it looks really nice. It would have been like that. So maybe it might have helped if it was in the eighties, but that's on Disney. So yeah. Um, interestingly, this did get nominated for best animated feature. What was it up yeah. against? Do you know? I do know. Uh, so it was up against Lilo and Stitch. Um, Spirit Stallion of the... Oh, God. God, I don't remember that. Oh, my. Is that the horse thing? Yeah, that's the horse horse thing. thing. Uh, Ice Age and Spirited Away. Wow. So... It didn't beat Spirited Away. No, Ice Age won. What? No, 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 it fucking didn't. I was very mad for, like, 0.5 of a second there. (laughs) No, Spirited Away easily won that. Yeah. Um, Yeah, one of the the writers, a guy called Rob Edwards, who hasn't done too much stuff. He did. He was the writer for Princess and the Frog and a couple of episodes of Fresh Prince, said it was extremely challenging to try and convert the traditional Treasure Island story into... It's space now. How? Um, I can't imagine yeah, that being I difficult. can't imagine that was hard, yeah. <laughs> That's like, the thing. I, I'm not sure why he was struggling unless... too much. I guess a lot of what they were worried about was it still looking like pirates. So they had to decide that space was still an atmosphere you could breathe in. See, that, um, or just not talk too much about how everyone doesn't have to be in these mad, crazy <laughs> space suits. Yeah. And they were very determined <laughs> to kind of like, steer away from that so that it wasn't so sort of cold feeling. And it felt a bit more. The quote I've got down is, they wanted to put the romance back in it. Romance of what? Right. Being pirates? Pirate <laughs> romance? Well, yeah, because if you do put a pirate ship in space with people on it, they're all going to like implode in the cold vacuum of space. <laughs> yeah, but saying that, so, though, right? In, pir- in uh, P- Peter Pan, the boat flies as well. Yeah, it does. Yeah. And that goes into the atmosphere. If anything, that, you know, that must be pretty horrible, just like being in that <laughs> point of the atmosphere where it's really thin that you can hardly breathe, but you can breathe just enough. That must be actual torture. As far as, if you're in space, as like, leaps in logic you have to make, I reckon space having an atmosphere is the easiest one. I can get... That's, yeah. I, do you know what yeah. I mean? I never even... I just think, right, it's a cool cartoon about pirates in space. I really yeah. don't give a shit about space suits. And yeah. I'm yeah. sure Neil deGrasse Tyson does, but he's a cunt. <laughs> I can get over it. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, yeah. Another, I've got, I've, I've written, so I was happy to do research for this movie because I really enjoy it. The design apparently was 70 th- 70% traditional and 30% sci-fi. What do you guys think about doing it, like, with that sort of ratio? Or would you prefer it in something of slightly different? Maybe, I, actually, maybe a little bit more towards the sci-fi. Like Firefly, how it's like this cowboy aesthetic, but I can, everything's I can, a I little that, yeah. bit cooler, you know? It's like, I mean, the one thing I really like about this film is, like, it's it's weird, isn't it? Because a lot of the shots in it, you wouldn't think, like, when he's in the gallows and stuff like that, you wouldn't, you wouldn't, I mean, obviously, believe John Silver's got, like, robot arms and shit, but other than that, you wouldn't know that it's sci-fi, would you? If you just looked at the shot of the gallows, you just assume it's a painting of, like, yeah. the yeah. bloody, like, a bloody pirate thing, whereas they could have maybe added more stuff within the ship. And just within the general 
the locations to make it more sci-fi. But like, then again, I don't know what they would do without losing that kind of pirate look. Yeah, I reckon if you'd maybe. made it like, if you made it like a spaceship, um, which is what the that Italian German. I don't know why Italian and German. That's a weird mix. But that other live action yeah. one, that was the only thing it had in common was the story. There wasn't any sort of pirate aesthetic at all. Um, no. It was just literally Treasure Island, but in space. But no, of none of the sim- like just the story aesthetic. of it. Like, yeah. I, I quite like that they kept the pirate thing of it, though. That's yeah, yeah. I think it gave cool. it a really interesting look. And they gave them all like, the pirate voices. Yeah, yeah like, I think it was more steampunk, cyberpunk-esque yeah. than just, we're doing a space story. And I think that works yeah. quite nicely with Disney doing like more interesting stuff than just, we're going to do a space story now. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. Um, it's interesting, Joe, that you mentioned uh, Peter Pan earlier. Because they used Captain Hook as like to test the computer animations of Silver's arm. Really? So rather than Captain Hook having a hook, they replaced his whole arm Whoa. with That's Silver's so cool. oh, I hope that mad exists. robotic arm. That's if amazing. Could, I would love to see that. Yeah. And then again, that oh, would be man. so cool. That would be so cool. Um, but yeah, I will maybe save fun facts as and <clears throat> when we get to them. But let's do a quickish. Uh, run through of the plot I guess um, so we open he's just having he's really young bedtime story he's reading all about the classic story that I was going to say everyone knows but I don't actually know the story of Treasure Island I've never read it I've never I've watched read it. it quite a few times it's yeah. alright it's alright it's, it's yeah it, it's quite it's not like dark I mean, no, I suppose it is but it, I don't know it's weird it's not like tradi- like gritty kind of pirates it's yeah. very people have tried Yo-ho. to make pirates really cool but it's very much kind of like pirates of penzance style like yeah it's very okay. singing yoho yoho pirates like for me kind of yeah it's like oh, okay. it's like the it's like the disney pirates of the caribbean riders in, in you know what okay. i mean it's very family in a way, friendly in a way but there are some the d- perfect like adaptation aspects. of this will always be the Muppets one, oh, the because Muppets. <laughs> because yeah. it completely nails like what the book is going for. Yeah, plus very enough. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it immediately jumps to twelve years later, and we get this character doing some sky surfing with his ooh that that edgy haircut. <laughs> Yeesh. Um, oh, man, they oh, man. were a, honestly they were a good ten years too late on that haircut. <laughs> like yeah. 2002 you know what I mean like like John Connor rocked up with that in Terminator 2 it was fine it was the 90s yeah but no did <laughs> yeah, you not see on. the thingy though it was like it was all like shaved like down up to here and but then like, like sticking ponytail. out the back was like a little ponytail <laughs> like they'd cut like around a bit of her and then stitched oh it was so weird she might have really let that down in the middle of the movie the horrible mullet he would have had as a result it would have been oh it was so weird <laughs> horrific oh, um but yeah, this guy, I was getting some, like, mad Anakin vibes off this guy. <laughs> yes! <laughs> yes! Like, moody little bitch boy turns into a bit more of a hero towards the end, which Anakin didn't get. But, yeah, the many little bitch boy-esque stuff it was just Anakin all over. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, and there's the whole pub thing. They're at the pub, and we find out that he's, he hasn't got a dad. Again, very Anakin-esque. Um, yeah. And then, what's his face? I haven't written down his name, even though he's like, oh, Billy Bones. Billy Bones. That guy. Crashes, gives him the funny little orb map thing. Um, and then they have to escape real quick, because pirates are after it. Um, and we've got the weird dog alien man thing. Um, oh, Dr. Mr. Is it Dr. Libsley? Oh, the, the cha- the chains in- oh, no, Dilbert Dr. Libsley's the name in the, in the book, sorry. Because yeah. it's well, weird... The- they combine two characters in this in the book. I was going to say that's exactly. Yeah. Where have I written that Dilbert, down? Dilbert kind of looks like he's escaped from the Great Mouse Detective. He does. Yeah, I can see that. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, Squire Trelawney and Doctor Livesey. Doctor Livesey. Yeah. Are they the, those two? Yeah, yeah. They're the those two, two, two that are morphed to be him. Um, yeah. And interesting later on, so he's he's meant to be like, like a dog alien, I think, who then falls in love with a cat. Alien yeah, yeah. Thing, but he's also um, kind of hitting on uh, Jim's mom at the start. I know, yeah. yeah. 
a bit weird, isn't it? It's a little, little horn dog, isn't he? He's got dogs in all and the races. Yeah. Ha ha. <laughs> oh, no. Oh. Oh, that was bad. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, the funny snake turtle dies, gives the map. Um, pirates come along, they escape. Oh, I like this. They were looking off at the moon, little crescent moon. But that's actually like a physical a structure. Set. That's the spaceport. I, I always thought that was I, pretty sick. I, was yeah. I like that. I like that a lot. Um, kind of looks like the Halo ring. It does. As you get closer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's true. Um, they So they find their ship. It's called the RLS Legacy. It's the something legacy. Yeah, yeah RLS. And the RLS stands for Robert Louis Stevenson. Oh, is cute. I actually, author. you know what? I actually wondered that when I was watching it. I was like, I wonder if that like RLS is like an in-universe thing. I'm not like, sure if it was in universe, but it was definitely. Well, no, it's not. Now that I know it, that's what it stands for. That's pretty yeah. sick, though, and I'm glad that it actually is something. But yeah, they they, they did that, which is quite cool. Um, ba, ba, bam, they get on the ship. I've written all the characters' names, but they're not that important. Yeah, all the than... pirates are just there to be threatening. Yeah. yeah. But the thing is, um, the thing is, most of the characters in this, they don't really have characters. There's a lot of Not just really. skipping straight into like, you know, J- like Jim Jim Hawkins has the most backstory, and then 20 minutes into the movie, his dialogue's taken away because Dilbert starts talking for him, and he doesn't yeah. get a line for about 10 minutes. It's really odd. See, it's really weird with this because they've. It's like when I watch this and I think about the actual Treasure Planet story, it's like this version is the the Treasure Planet. Fucking now treasure island story is the treasure island it's like this is the treasure island story if you were to, if we were to tell it on like this show for example like you skip out God, all the you're stuff right yeah yeah, yeah. cuz like the bit in the the big at the beginning with the inn and billy bones like he's in like five chapters of the book he's in it for ages he's like stays at the inn and he's he's there for months and there's pirates come and visit him and he gets given the black spot and everything whereas yeah. in this he just pops into the door and dies and it's weird, isn't it? Thing. Like some of the like, f- where some of the focus is. Like, like what I, I didn't bring it up during the aesthetic thing. I probably should have done. I really love the design of Captain Flint in this. He looks amazing, yeah. right? He's so cool. Yeah. Uh, also, he was uh, voiced by Peter Cullen. That's my boy, Optimus Prime. We keep <laughs> getting <laughs> keep this off. fucking claws. <laughs> like, <laughs> we're skirting around the edges. But um, uh. I, like, I wanted him to be in it more because he looked really cool. And I understand why he wouldn't have been, but I, I don't know, you know? See, the thing with right, him, though, yeah. they make some really some weird company. changes in this to the book. Like, for example, the boat. The actual ship is called something else in the book. It's called, like, the HMS something, I can't remember. But I'm with Captain Flint. A big thing in the, in the book is that all the pirates are looking for the treasure because they're Flint's, like, ex- crew yeah yeah and they're like oh well we were the like we he buried it and like billy bones is like part of his crew where is it this it's just a legend that's like 100 years old and it's weird that they changed that i think that's really strange but i don't know Um, i mean they must have reason for it but yeah i mean they said they were struggling to change the script across from traditional pirates like like treasure island to treasure planet yeah maybe they could have been struggling for no particular reason and just kept changing stuff to make it yeah, a, true. a different sort of sense. I'm not yeah. too sure. Um, yeah, I've just realised as well, I never did any of the big names who are in this. Um, we said Peter Cullen does oh. the voice of Flint. Joseph, Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Yeah. Yeah. I can't get over that. I... Yeah. Love that. Mad his main that. reasoning... His, his face matches the character so well. This <laughs> indescribable blandness that is Joseph Gordon-Levitt. <laughs> That's Jim Hawkins. <laughs> <laughs> it's, just, it's just a young Bruce Willis, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yeah, his main reasoning for wanting to do this movie was because, oh, it's a big deal to be part of a Disney movie. It's going to be such a, a, a big movie to be a part of. <laughs> not, not this one. Um, wasn't wasn't that great. Wasn't that great at all. Um, what have we, else have we got here? Uh, oh, the robot we'll meet later, Ben. Who I've written down as Robin Williams? Nope. Nope. No. It wasn't. It was Martin Short. <laughs> yeah. Who I only know Martin Short from being in the Santa Claus Three. Yeah. Jack Frost. Yeah. Jack Frost. 
<laughs> oh man. So well. He sings uh, that New York, New York version, doesn't he? But it's bloody North Pole. Instead, when he goes, oh, when he's like no. taking over, he's like, it's up to you, North Pole, <laughs> North. Oh man, what a film that is. Uh, you giving that? me oh, like, so long. fucking <laughs> Vietnam flashbacks to the fucking <laughs> Santa Claus. And he has, the, you know, he has like the beard, but it's all icicles <laughs> instead of actual hair. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell! <laughs> what a film that is! What a movie! Oh man! Um, oh, man. You know the big name. Well, they've done big stuff. Arrow, the guy, the big rock, the thing from Fantastic Four, but his great cousin or something who falls off the ship later, was Roscoe Lee Brown, who has done big voices in like um, old superhero cartoons. So he was in Spider Man as the Kingpin, and he was in Batman. Uh, like, nice. Which is pretty neat. I can uh, hear that now. I can really, yeah, I can yeah. fully hear that. Now. I recognise. He's also done lots of narration work on. I can imagine some yeah. some movies, um, such as Babe and Babe Two. Doesn't he also narrate <laughs> the beginning of this? Yeah, yeah, uh, definitely yeah. does. I'm sure he does. It sounds. Ooh, like I'm not putting that down. He's the guy at the voice at the beginning. He's like Flint's crew, or whatever you know. I'm sure it's him because. I mean, most likely, he's got a good voice for it. He does. But yeah. <laughs> he also narrated Garfield 2. Nice. Yes. So, <laughs> uh, I knew I recognised him from somewhere. <laughs> yeah, he's definitely attached to the, the finest of, of yeah. projects. Uh, um, I mentioned Captain Amelia. No, no, that's Emma Thompson. Yeah. I thought, yeah, yeah I thought so. I almost was... feel, I feel bad saying this. Emma Thompson's great in everything. We talked about an Iron Legend, like she has such a small role in it, but like, Holy, holy shit she fucking gives it her all but emma thompson is very good at acting with her face like really good at acting with her face and you take yeah. that away and she de- she delivers the lines well but it's like it's not what you expect when you hear emma thompson's yeah. name you know it's yeah it's kind of there um the one something i had written down for this is she was very like glad to be casting an action adventure role without having to do all the action-adventure stuff. I would imagine uh, so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mainly because she was pregnant for a lot of the recordings. Ah. So I guess you can still pretend to be a cat jumping around, but not have to do any <laughs> of the jumping around because it's just your voice. Do you reckon that was like I an actual know. thing with actors? They're like, oh, like, well, female actors, obviously. It's like, oh, we're going to be pregnant. I'm going to be, I'm pregnant. So talk to my agent. It's like, oh, yeah, just get me like an animated film for like nine months. <laughs> just, I don't want to be yeah. doing big stuff. You know what I mean? Probably. Like, oh, man, don't worry. Don't worry about it, mate. Don't worry. I'll get. I'll get you that animated role, and then Treasure Planet. Um, but yeah, that's not the main notable cast or the ones I recognised anyway. And uh, so there's probably Isn't... more famous people who I've just missed off because um, I'm a dumb bitch. One other person. Um, you know the woman who plays his mom. Yeah. I don't know if it is. It's she sounds really familiar. Is she the one I who thought... does the voice of Andy's mom? <laughs> I wrote she is the Andy's same mom. thing down. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I thought um, it was. I thought so. She's good at being a mum, apparently. Mums, yeah. Yeah. Who doesn't age in this movie either. Like, no. the, the character they had for her when he was a kid is exactly the same as when he's yeah, like. Yeah, she's just the same, yeah. Years older. Disney mum. Um, You're either eternally hot or dead. There's no yeah. in between. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yeah, they get on their ship and they sail off. Um, and they see all the space whales and shit. That's pretty much what I've written down. PS2 um, space whales. <laughs> that's the ones. Yeah. Um, and all the rest of the crew who aren't named or aren't particularly important are all just grey background characters. Yeah. With no real detail or particularly good colours, which I guess is kind of good. I quite liked it that it was. You immediately know how important they are if they you need to focus on them. Yeah, you 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 know that they're bad, not just from like the way they act. They can just it's they almost then have like a big arrow with bad guy pointing to them <laughs> by just being like dark, almost like shadows. Which you could probably say something about how they're just shadows and evil and darkness and stuff. But yeah, if they're not in the story, why put any effort into animating them that much or putting like designing them? Well, it's weird, isn't it? Because like the budget for this movie almost doesn't make sense to me. Because I know they it's were crazy. using like 3D and stuff, but there's not that many locations, and obviously you can reuse a bunch of character models as you you, you know you yeah. keep going through. Yeah. So where did the fucking money go? Probably paying people. Was it 
Princess Mononoke that used 3D animation as well? With like the rolling hills and stuff? I want to say yeah. Yeah. What was the budget yeah. of that one? Nothing. <laughs> Compared exactly. to this, nothing. Which is mad. Um, so I think, bizarrely, I think it's interesting how, because Disney's like arguably a bigger company, makes bigger movies with bit more with more money. Yeah. They just threw a lot of money at it, hoping they'd make something spectacular. And while some people like it, and some people own the DVDs, it didn't wasn't that well received. Whereas Ghibli can make something for nothing, with like very similar aesthetics and techniques, and it be much more popular. I guess they just focus on actual writing of stories sometimes, yeah. but not the pacing. I don't know where I'm going, but yeah, <laughs> interesting comparison, I guess. Um, yep, yeah, we get to meet. Uh, Mr. Silver. He's only ever called that. I don't think we ever hear his first name in this. I can't remember, yeah. I think no. a lot of them are just Mr. or Captain something. Um, and we get the busy working montage where he's just a hard worker and these two gradually get closer. Um, did you feel, Joe, did you feel that yeah. knowing the story of Treasure Island already hurt or helped this adaptation? Because there was... So, I mean, like, I know the they do the reveal of Hong John Silver talking to all his crew pretty early on, but there's still a yeah. little bit of time where they're trying to swindle you. And I couldn't yeah. help but feel like... It's in the I book. Know what's going on. They hide him being the head of the, like, the mutiny really, like, well. Like, yeah. it's weird because it's the, the, the whole thing, it's very similar how you, how Jim finds out in the, in this as he does in the book. He finds out while he's in the, the barrel. But in the book, it's different because it's like, yeah. you, you, you literally, he, it, it makes you think that John Silver's like the nicest guy in the world, don't they? They're like, yeah, 100%. They're like, like literally, for like a good half of the book, half, like half the characters are like, oh, John Silver's such a good guy. He's such a good guy. Oh, he's so clean. He owns a, he owns a public house and it's all really good. And then all of a sudden, he, John, um, Jim just so happens to be in a bucket when he overhears like, John trying to convince one of the hands to join the mutiny or something. And then all of a sudden he becomes this kind of, like, evil guy. Whereas with this, it very... Like, the bit at the beginning, when the attack that the... um, I can't remember, is it called the Bembo in this? Or did they not give a name to the end? Is it called the Bembo? It's still called the Bembo. Yeah. uh, yeah. Well, when they attack the Bembo in this, the... He's he's so obviously there, isn't he? Yeah. You can see the leg. In the shadow as they walk up the mount the the hill, and then he's very obviously the evil guy when he asks about bones and he's like he's like mm, don't know what you're talking about I'm a cyborg ah you know I think with this they don't try and trick you into thinking he's a good guy like yeah I suppose book. so so I think knowing knowing that he turns out to be the bad guy anyway. But I suppose everyone does, though, don't they? Like, you, like even like you guys, Amelia and Jacob. You've not. Have you read? Have you ever read Treasure Island? I literally know nothing about it. Nope. No, but you know, you know that John Silver's like yeah. evil part. You know exactly. You don't need. Yeah, to that, read that's the one thing you know is that Long John Silver, whatever his name is, is meant to be a dick. Yeah. Well, yeah, exactly. Like, so the the if they had tried to hide it, they wouldn't have worked as well. That's the problem with. Yeah. Treasure Island ad- adaptations. It's when they tried to hide the fact that John Silver's the bad guy because it if worked. You know, and then it's hard then to like ever yeah because make it make it anything otherwise. Exactly. Everyone knows John Silver's a. You'd big have pirate, to pull you know I mean? such a ridiculous swerve. Like the nice guy couldn't be, you know, a cook or anything. He couldn't even be called like Long John Silver. You'd have to pull like such a like when they hid. Yeah. I say hid when they tried to hide Khan in that second Star Trek movie, and everyone knew it was coming. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this is the thing. It's like, but then the problem is, then if you change it that much just for the just to try and get the um, the surprise in there, if you know the story of Treasure Island, then you already know there's going to be a mutiny. <laughs> yeah. So true. You know yeah. that someone's going to come forward. So that's the issue in it. If you're going to adapt it, you just got to lean into the fact that he's an evil bastard. So. Yeah. That's probably right. But I mean. It's it, it kind of diverges a bit at the end, obviously, because they don't actually go to a planet and there's not, like, flying boats and shit. But, um... <laughs> they took some artistic liberties. In the they did, I guess. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean... I a lot of what this, this movie was relying on was kids who 
didn't know the story of Treasure Perhaps, Island. Yeah, yeah. I read one thing somewhere that said they wanted to capture the interest of kids, uh, it, like is as captivated as kids were when they first read Treasure Island when that came out. But pirates weren't as interesting in two thousand and two, but space was. So they yeah. tried to make a similar sort of story for like pirate people kids. who or like kids mainly who hadn't ever seen or heard of Treasure Island or pirates and Me? stuff. I only read Treasure Island because of this movie. That's like well, the only reason. So I'm tempted go. to go back and find something else more out about it now, but I definitely saw Treasure Planet first. Yeah, hundred percent. I so, I only read Treasure Island because of this movie. That's the only reason. So maybe Disney did win. Wow. Yeah, see, there you go. Ooh. <laughs> like my love for pirates was came from this movie. So there you go. The the uh, interesting. The the plan worked. So there you go. <laughs> um. But yeah, after all that, the, the the montage and some of the dad flashbacks, and we see how abandoned and how he became the whiny little bitch boy that he is. Um, then there's the big old star explodes and becomes a black hole, and I've written, "Oh shit, a supernova." See, that's the bit. <laughs> that's the bit. What I'm like, I'm fine. I'm fine with the depths of space being breathable. I, it's fine. The leap of logic there is that big. Yep. Not seeing a star going supernova. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're so close to it. It was so funny. It's not an yep. iceberg in the dark. You know what I mean? Like it's fucking. It emits light. See, and then it's it becomes massive. A, it becomes a black hole. Like the life cycle of the star happens in about twenty fucking minutes. Yeah. <laughs> What's going yeah. on? See, it's the thing of it is, brilliant. though, right? Like. Did it have to be a supernova? It could have been... It's fucking space. It could have been it could anything. Have been anything. Yeah. It could have been <laughs> a that. meteorite shower. It could have been... It could have been anything. In the book, this particular section lasts for, like, one page. And they don't even go into detail about it. All they say is that Mr. Arrow disappeared one night. That's it. That's all they did. That, this could have been anything. Why the fuck did they pick a supernova? It's, it baffles me. <laughs> It's, it it's bizarre, um, but the, they start shooting at little meteor, like, meteor or like rock chunks that start flying towards them because everyone knows when a supernova goes supernova, it shoots out little bits of rock and stuff at you. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Um, but there was a sweet cannon for like a bit, like a couple of seconds. One of the guys was just sat on this sweet steampunk sci-fi yeah, cannon, that was kind of shooting made a note of that because I thought it looked good. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, good old Jim saves Silver's life. Even though, were, were they tied down by that point? I, I think they tied down. He saved his life anyway. Yeah. Um, we get the black hole. Spider lobster thing cuts arrow. Well, he cuts his lifeline. Is that what we got the term lifeline? Whoa. Not this, not this movie, but In the general. idea that you're. Yeah, yeah they, had, they had them on ships. Yeah, they used to. That's yeah. what they used to do. They used to just tie themselves down when there was a storm. So that's what it was actually called a lifeline. So. So, I mean, I'm sure there was other uses for it before we went, you know, sailing across the ocean, but I assume this is where they, it come from today. And they popularised the phrase. Yeah. That's cool. But, yeah, uh, Arrow gets sucked off into a black hole. Does he? <laughs> I don't think he does. That's a different kind of <laughs> Nice. Um, and they ride the big old wave out because Mr. Dogman knows all about supernovas and stuff yes. conveniently um, they blame Jim for Arrow dying and eventually we get a um, what's this why have I written that oh right I've written so when he's sat in the barrel and he finds out that uh, Silver is like oh I don't really like that guy he's just some wanker who's come into the kitchens and stuff I've written a real high school musical moment yeah. <laughs> it is. I'll give it that. that's my point of reference for for this apparently, um, but I guess High School Musical had a real Treasure Planet moment, no Treasure Island moment. Um, Zac Efron should yeah, play Jim Hawkins go. in the live action version of this. <laughs> Ooh, I'd watch that. I um, would. I'd watch this as live action, yo, know, if they wanted to redo it. Disney Plus. Same. <laughs> like full they, on. Well, they don't, they Who knows? Won't. Second, you know, get sec- second they've got, look, like... they're going through the classics very fucking quickly. They'll get See, here eventually. Hopefully. <laughs> Although, no, might... they, they, did, they were planning a sequel for this that never got made. 
because of how what they a TV show as well. I think they, they they had it like all set up, didn't I they? Ready so. to go. And this is kind of a dumb thing a for Disney: is is make it make a movie, make a VHS sequel, and make a TV show. Lilo and Stitch got one, Hercules got one, Aladdin got yeah. one, everything yeah. got one. Yeah. Well, that's what uh, I mean. They, they had it all set up, and then when this flopped, they were like, "Nah, fuck it, fucking cancel it." Like they were the actually. Like, go on, go on if you got to think about the. I was say, it sounds. Like, I've got some in, some details for it. It sounds yeah. kind of interesting. So it was going to have Willem Dafoe as Iron Beard. Yeah, he was who I guess was guy. like a black beard type. Whoa. Yeah. Um, and he was trying to release criminals from Botany Bay prison asteroid. Yeah. I guess they just put asteroid on the end of it to make it sci-fi. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I could just um, imagine it being but, like a building just sitting on top of an asteroid as well. That's, that's, that's literally it. all it's going to be instead of an island or something. Yeah. Um, but that I feel could have been really interesting but oh well, well they didn't they didn't thingy as well didn't they i know that they um, they were actually in new york the day it came out and william defoe was meant to be coming in that day to film to record to start recording his lines but they got the call from disney saying that they were canceling the film so they never ended up he never ended up coming in so they, they were that close. They were that close. They, they, just... were, they were like at the stage where they were recording lines, starting to record lines, yeah. Because they, they were going to so get all the cast to return, yeah. Like everyone yeah. had agreed to return to do a sequel. And they were like, nah, sorry, I'm not making it. Oof. Shame. Yeah. Because I would have liked to have seen that. I, I oh, would, well. The story sounds pretty cool. Yeah. Um, and then we get the mutiny and they escape. Um, we see that Silver could have shot Jim on his way up, but doesn't. Is he, uh, he's still a bad guy, but he's, he's just... catching feelings. Yeah. Oh, oh, what a... Pussy. <laughs> um, <laughs> more their, their, little, <laughs> their little skiff thing gets shot down and they crash on the planet. Um, treasure planet. On the treasure planet. On the treasure um, planet. On the treasure planet. Oh, I haven't mentioned Morph throughout any of this, but he's oh, yeah. not really that integral to the plot. See, Morph's you know one of those characters, isn't he, that they put in to be like, oh, Morph, everyone loves Morph. But yeah. mm, he replaced the see, parrot, doesn't he? Like a parrot see, I, get, um, yes. I got proven wrong really fast while I was talking to Charlotte about Morph because he showed up on the screen and I literally turned to her and I was like, do you, do you get you know tired of when Disney are really obviously like, buy a toy of this? And she turned to me and she was like, when this movie came out, there was a McDonald's toy of it. And it's there the was. only one I wanted. <laughs> and she got it. So yeah, I, I was those. wrong. <laughs> I remember the McDonald's toys. I had what you used to do. You used to get all the different ones, but they used to, used to come with a piece of um, Ben. And you had to collect they all did, of them to didn't create they? Ben. And I actually um, created Ben. I got all of them. I convinced mum and dad to take me enough times so that I could. There you go. See? There we go. Wow. Perfect. I had them as back. well. <laughs> I I got all the pieces of it. I actually remember, right, going to a Mackey's once, and yeah, there it is, and trading a kid for the head, because I got I got the body, and I was like, oh, I'm not, I've, I've not got that. I've already got this, and then this kid on the other table said the same thing about the head, and I was like, come on, do you want to swap? And the kid was like, yeah, go on. So I got the head no because shit. I swapped with some kid. Yeah, literally. Nice. So that's how I got the head. Brilliant. There we go, see? That's um, oh my about god, memory. I've got a head in Mackey's. That's when Mackey's toys were good. Oh, you can't be making that joke, so I was three. I was three years old. <laughs> so, gotta be a bit careful there, oh, uh, Samuel. Oh, I miss when Disney and McDonald's used to do, like, really good McDonald's toys. Like, we collected so many of them, and we still got them, because, like, even though they were shitty McDonald's toys, like, they were kind of good quality McDonald's yeah. toys. They were, yeah, I had, um, I had some Toy Story ones from when the second movie came out, and they were, like, legit six-inch, fully pausable mm-hmm. action figures with, like, yeah. action features and shit. Oh, I had, like, a little Buzz Lightyear, and you press his little... Um, Stark man yeah. blew bit and he made noises oh, and stuff. Yeah. Oh my god! My god. Well, good. Do they still make um, them? Like, the, haven't we all still come with toys? Nah. Well, sometimes, but they're very weird toys. They mostly oh. come with books. Oh, yeah, they're trying to. Because, t- like, what do you call it? Burger King don't do toys anymore, do they? Or something? At all. Yeah, they don't do them all. No. Oof. I feel bad for our kids not, to, not being able to get a happy meal with toys. Remember, you used to get toys in cereal as well. 
Yeah. yeah. Remember oh, Do you remember the watch call it once? The the when uh, Revenge of the Sith came out and they did those mini lightsabers that had the ball and the blade. <laughs> Fuck! Yes. Remember them? What a throwback! <laughs> oh man, I had loads of them. They were got fucking to amazing. <laughs> Incredible! Oh, oh man, God. they were the best ones that you. Ever I used did. to love those so much. They were so yeah. good. They, oh man, fucking Very, amazing. I mean, the oh, rare one was the purple. Was Mace Windu's, wasn't it? I had yeah, purple. we had that. What nah, the? Fuck? Was, I think I had oh! So good. Oh, look at him! Oh, bloody beautiful! Awesome! Oh my bloody, bloody god! Uh, but yeah, Treasure Planet. Yeah. Treasure Planet. <laughs> um, so yeah, they very quickly meet Ben, who, as I say, either could or should be Robin Williams. Um, but if you want to yeah. watch a movie where Robin Williams is a robot, uh, watch Robots. And uh, the Bicentennial Man. And that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what? But, playing Robots? Oh, he plays that red one, Fender. doesn't he? Fender, Fender one, yeah. Who looks kind of similar to Ben. Yeah. Really. I'm not, yeah. I, I should have checked when Robots came out. But yeah, I, I felt like Martin Short was just doing a really big Robin Williams impression. I'll agree yeah. with you though. Yeah, totally. But, but yeah, it just I didn't it came like out this in two thousand and five. Robots wow. did. Oh, wow. never mind then. Yeah. See, I, mean, I I didn't like this character either, and I was keenly aware that there was only half an hour of the movie left, and he was so fucking extra. I was like, this is it, isn't it? Every scene has got to be crammed and devoted to a joke about fucking. 2002 Olaf equivalent. It's not a happy boy. <laughs> <laughs> did, did not like Ben. Um, and they they done this weird thing in the middle of a grass field because the pirates have come to get them, to get the map, even though they haven't really got it, it's still on the ship. So they escape out the back, and that's as we that's kind of like a really big throwaway important bit of the plot that we didn't realise. Well, I didn't realise it anyway. That the whole planet is just this big machine thing yeah yeah um that if you blink you've missed it and that's how they how later on they work out where the treasure is but yeah it's kind of like a why, throwaway thing why can jim use the map is it ever explained he just he does just, it. Just, he just he's just clever and knows how to do it yeah maybe he's yeah. just really good at rubik's cubes or something <laughs> do you know do you know why it's so that we can have that joke at the beginning where um Doctor, what's it called? Dobbler, is that what his name is? Yeah, I think yeah, it's yeah. Doctor Where Doctor Dobbler's like, oh, I'm Dilbert never going to be able to open this map. I'm going to be doing it for hundreds of years. That about, and then he does it straight away. And you're like, oh, it, yeah. a doctor can't even do it. But this no one else can. is able is able to do it either. That's yeah. why they keep him alive, and why yeah. they keep all the others is so that he can operate the map. He just because he's just magic. Maybe that's it. Maybe, maybe his dad was Captain Flint. There you go. Maybe. How maybe would you fuck that? Maybe that's. <laughs> I don't know. I, mean, I don't really want to think about it. They managed to do it in I'm Star just... Wars, so his. I mean, his bodily autonomy might be normal. Might just be his face. That's a bit weird. See, yeah. you say that, right? Right. You say how? How can you with Doc, Cap, like Captain Flint, right? But at the set, I could. I could say the same thing about in Return of the Jedi. Why does Jabba like watching girls of people other of his other species? It's like I was watching a like a dog dance and being like, <laughs> weird by it, you know what I mean? That's really weird. It it's is a similar really situation. There's a lady jabber in Phantom Menace though, isn't there? There is a lady jabber, yeah. Well there you go. Lady so it's not like Mrs. the Hut. Well yeah. there you go, see? First name Pizza, last name. Hey. Uh, that was fucking nice. awful. It's um, a similar I'm, situation though, it's really weird. There but, is a, an in well, I say interesting fact. They cut a scene where you found out that you know how at the end you get uh, Captain Amelia and Dog Doppler Man, how they have weird babies. Yeah. The they cut. They was gonna have for some reason they were gonna include a scene where they said that Doppler, the male, was the one to give birth to them. Oh but no! They decided to cut that. <laughs> Why they wanted that in there in the first place, I like, don't know. But you see, you I know what is really weird. About does that mean Captain Amelia has a fat cock? Hey, I'm yeah, just, I do. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> See, I thought that scene was really weird, you know, because they don't like right in Shrek, right? When Donkey has baby, I knew you were gonna mention yeah, Shrek with the, with the dragon. They, they lean into like how weird and, mute, and the mutant babies. They lean into it, don't they? He literally says, "Oh, look at our mutant babies," and they're like half donkey, half dragon. Whereas with yeah. this, it's like they were too afraid to do that, 
So they make the boys want they make the the boy babies dogs and the girl babies cats. They don't yeah. they don't lean into the fact that it's a cat and a dog. It's just it's like they don't have like either some baby dats or cogs, but no, they're just cog, yeah. cats and it's Yeah, but like, they did that well, in Lady and the Tramp, didn't they? When they I don't know how guys, how well you guys know that. When Lady gives birth, Scamp oh, yeah. is a is like a it's meant it's to be true. a schnauzer, oh, yeah. Yeah. and then the girl dogs like are the little ladies. Maybe it's like a general rule in Disney. It's like, maybe. when you're pitching an idea, it's like, are there going to be mutant babies in this? It's like, yeah, probably. <laughs> right, then just make sure that the the, the, the the male one's the same as the dad, and the girl one's the same as the mum, right? It's like, alright, cool. <laughs> mutant <that>. babies. <laughs> and then, DreamWorks is the opposite. They're like... Mutant babies. Yeah. <laughs> Actual Exclusively mutant babies. Mutant babies. <laughs> it's like before you even do the script, I want to see a picture of these mutant babies. <laughs> That's why fucking Katzinger left Disney. <laughs> That's the yeah. true story. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Dispute over mutant babies. <laughs> oh dear. Um, but yeah, they escape and the planet's a machine thing. Um, bu- 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 um, they get to the ship, get to the map, um, but Spider Lobster Man's there. And they have this, this weird scene where Ben starts pulling out all the cables to try and s- defuse the cannons or something. Yeah. But instead the, turns off the anti gravity. So yeah. like in any, any film where you did def- like turn off anti gravity, everything just starts floating up rather than just staying where it is. Just how anti gravity. Yeah. It's not. They're not like to re- inverting it so it pushes over everything away. They're also on a planet during this scene. That's yeah. what I thought. It really annoyed me, gravity. actually. I was like, wh- why are they... What? Uh, if, never mind. if the whole point was that he was the spider guy was going to get floaty and they were going to like kick him off the side of the boat and then he'd like gravity would re-establish and he fell, I would have been mm. fine with it. It's the fact that he kept going up into space. <laughs> at what really point fucking does, slowly. <laughs> see, at what point then does the oxygen stop? Like, he, he's, he's, he's still screaming as he goes past the, the flag. So there's not like a ball of oxygen. Oh, so all of space is ox- oxygenated. Maybe it's called. Yeah. It's got a name. Ethereum. Ethereum. So he's I'm just sure floating in the vat of space. We yeah, had Ethereum it. in another movie. That sounds familiar. Ethereum. I think I don't think Can it's a concept it? Disney invented. I think it's like a general concept of this ox. There's like pockets of atmosphere in space. It's in, in Castle space. in the Sky, isn't it? Ethereum. Ooh. Yeah. That's the name of the crystal in the English version. I'm sure it is. Oh, maybe. Well, when did that's... that come out over here? Yeah. I can't remember. Oh, God, I, don't, I, don't, I can't remember. There's so many different releases for those Ghibli movies. <laughs> God knows. It could be a different spelling, or I'm saying it wrong, but it's E T H E rum. So it's. Or maybe it's Ethereum. Ethereum. It's a cool word, isn't it? Ethereum. Either way. Ethereum. I mean, it is Ethereum. I just can't read or write, apparently. <laughs> um, but the. Yeah, the, the pirates get the map eventually. Um, they follow the map. Kind of, I quite like how the map, once they're on the planet, has like a little waypoint route thing, like they're playing a video game. I quite yeah. like that. <laughs> like Destiny. It was very, very convenient. More of a, like a GPS than a map, but still kind of cool. Um, then we get to the little hole in the ground to put the, the map orb in there, and it brings up a little hollow map that they can then use to open portals to anywhere across the galaxy. Which is a bit more, what is it's not entirely necessary that that's part of the plot. It's kind of cool, though. I yeah. think it's cool. I thought yeah. it was a shame they didn't, as they were hitting buttons really fast, I thought it was a missed opportunity to not show another Disney movie through one of the doors. You know yeah. what? I agree, yeah. I mean, I don't know what they could have shown. It could have been like... Just like Glee and Stitch or something. The last one. Yeah. You know, just... Boop. Yeah, just, just Hawaii in general. Yeah. Totally, yeah. Mm-hmm. That'd been pretty cool. But they didn't do that, which is odd. Apparently, there are some Disney Easter eggs in this. There's apparently, there's a stitch in a spacesuit in his bedroom when he's a kid. Yes, I cool. saw that. Yeah, <laughs> I, di- I didn't spot it, but it's there. Um, but yeah, so there's little portal thing, which is how Flint was able to nick treasure so easily. He could just point to where the treasure was, go in, take it, come back. Um, and the only reason Jim was able to work out where the treasure was buried, other than it was on that planet. Was it was at the centre of the planet because where else would it be? Because it was at the centre of the mechanism or something. There was something that the one of the characters said must have been Billy Bones or in the leg like the, the legend about how it was buried at the centre of a machine and the planet's yeah. machine. Oh, it's See, in the middle. 
Did he build this planet or did he discover it? Is this like an Aztec kind of situation? I where feel like he probably like built a, it. Did he build it with all his money? I reckon so, that's so, a yeah. lot of money. So he invented the teleportation then. So this man was like a pirate, but also he was he could invent like life changing technology and used it to steal stuff. Sounds I like think a pirate. It's... Yeah, maybe. Could he have made more money from selling the technology? To the there rest was of the a universe? lot of money in the center of that planet. I suppose there was a but... lot of treasure. Yeah, but like he couldn't spend it because it was stolen. But if he stole the technology. Then it'd be clean money that he could spend on whatever. So, so, so either depending on which way it would have gone, either it would, this would have been a pirate movie or like a big farmer movie, like either one. Yeah, I would have been cool with that. You know, <laughs> about a guy, about a guy selling his technology that he invented. He's like, oh, I was going to be a pirate, but I actually, I actually invented this like groundbreaking technology instead. So, yeah, that's it. That's the whole. That's where it ends. It's only a shot. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, while they're all nicking all the treasure because they've opened the portal to the middle, Ben's all like, oh, no, I'm sure there was something else I should have remembered. Oh, what was it? Probably the most important thing about how the entire, like, booty is booby trapped. <laughs> yeah, interesting. I don't know why I used <laughs> booty. It's, ne- it's nev- never called that. Booty trapped. It's, booty it's right, honestly, it's called booty so much in the actual book. It's ridiculous. There's a literally a bit where they say like that no one called it that. Like there's literally a bit where it's like, oh, the pirates aren't gonna want to give up their booty. And it's like, <laughs> all right, great. They say it so much, it's ridiculous. Um, and conveniently, Flint is there with the memory of Ben in his hand. How Ben ever escaped without his memory in a D- big contained core without setting off any booby traps and going through a portal. Well done, Ben. You clumsy <laughs> fucking genius. It's like the Jar Jar of this movie, I've just realised. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn, that's a shame. Um, and the whole thing starts lasering itself to death. Um, de- b- b- oh, I've written something in capitals that just says, but he doesn't. And I had to go above that to see what he meant. It was, Silver was going to choose treasure over Jim, but he's like, uh, oh, yeah. no, I'll choose choose the kid instead. Which is kind of sweet. Yeah. Um, but that's a lot of treasure he's just gone to waste. But, wow. Oh, well, he's, he's a good guy now or something. See, we've got to give, like, props to Captain Flint, though. Like, he just pulled, like, the biggest prank in the entire world. Like, if he knew <laughs> he was dying... galaxy, mate. No, but, well, yeah, exactly, yeah. If he knew he was dying, he could have... He's like, right, I don't want anyone to get my treasure. I'll just I'll destroy it now. He's like, unless I make them think <laughs> they've got the treasure... And then I kill them. Hey. <laughs> like yeah. it's the only the thing that would have made it better it, is it? if if the explosion was somehow rigged to spell out April Fools in the depths of space. <laughs> <laughs> just like gotcha. I, <laughs> just, it's just like um, hologram on the projects on the wall. Just um, a video of him like flossing or something. Like <laughs> <laughs> flossing as he's doing it. No. <laughs> I get fucked. Oh, oh, I was bastard, ahead of his time. Um, oh man! Was was there any of the treasure in the book of Booby Trapped at all? Or is that yeah, something they just is. did in this for like a climactic? Oh no, I don't know. I think, finish. I think it is. You know, at the end of the book is the bit I can't remember. Yes, because most the major, the majority of the book <laughs> focuses actually just on the relationship of the pirates. You just spend so much yeah. time like talking to them, exploring what they're like. That I can't did remember what the, treasure at the, the actual end? treasure I can't is like. Get it? Did he get <laughs> Honestly, the end? Like, <laughs> I know he kills. No, you know what? No, I, I can't remember. I can't remember if they, I can, a part of me's thinking they don't actually get the treasure at the end, or they get some of it. And you know, I don't know. I can't remember. Well, they only get some of it in this because the whole fucking thing explodes. Yeah. Um, yeah. But they they run out the portal on the ship. No, they bring the ship down, don't they? That's right. Yeah. So, Catwoman and Dogman. <laughs> That's who they are now. <laughs> go off and get the ship and bring it down. Um, but the whole planet's going to explode, and Ben's got a timer. Because he does, I guess. Um, and it's all a bit rushed. This end bit, I had to pause to write bits down. Because a lot of stuff just keeps yeah, happening. Yeah, it happens very quick, um, yeah. It does. Um, they figure that they can't just fly up off the planet because they'll get blown up. So they're like, oh, let's fly through the portal. Which I quite like. I thought that was a pretty 
smart thing to do that felt yeah. like they were about to miss it and they were going to try and have some dramatic riding the wave of an exploding planet like they did with the fucking supernova but no yeah. they try and go for the portal but change it from the core so Jim does his sweet whatever it's called what would he's, you call that S- surfing power? air surfing, surfing hoverboarding that, like that that whole thing I remember that being such a big fucking part of the marketing of this movie that's on the yeah, poster it was. it's yeah. like there was tons of the video game had like levels based around it it happens mm. twice and it's like bare, you know what I mean? Like it's barely yeah. around while it's happening. Yeah. It's, oh, it's really weird. <laughs> it's yeah. Um, but he manages to fly and just slap the holographic portal thing to the one with the moon station thing. Um, they fly through the portal and they're fine. The explosion doesn't follow them through or anything. I don't think. No. I'm not think... running it down. So if it, I think they're just fine. It just closes behind them. Yeah. Um, and they're all safe, and they're all gonna go home. Silver's like, "Oh, I'm <laughs> mad here. Here, up, take bitch? a little pink bubble and some money, um, and go join the academy." <laughs> which he, which Jim goes and does. Um, <laughs> isn't he in the academy in the second one? Isn't the whole thing of the second one that he's, he's that Captain Mia becomes yes. like a tutor or something? And there then... was something about how he's in the academy and he's got a girlfriend now um but i didn't write down anything much more than that it's something than... like because the thing when i was looking at the story for the second one it doesn't it's it the only thing like it's called treasure planet 2 but there's no treasure planet in it it's got no yeah. sense of tr- finding treasure in the entire film the story's just a guy they're trying to get a, pi- a ship back if anything and that's it treasure treasure yeah. ship that's what it is Tr- treasure like, ship <laughs> It's, it shouldn't be called... Because they all return in it, don't they? They're like John Silver's in it again and all the other stuff. But, like, mm. there's no Treasure Planets in it. So I don't know why it's called Treasure Planet 2. Mainly, I guess if it's that audiences would know... Well, I mean, it's yeah, that's true. It's, it's literally just, that's... like, that's the only reason, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You'd make some um, of it, wouldn't you? But that's pretty much it. Yeah, they buy a new pub. Um, Jim's in the Academy. Uh, Mutant and Babies. There's a picture of Silver. He's in the clouds. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah there is. that was so weird. It's I don't know so why weird. they did that. It's but. way too detailed. Like, it's <laughs> yeah, like it sort of starts off and you're like, oh yep, yeah, there are some clouds, and it gets sharper and sharper. It's like they're turning yeah. up the resolution, and you go, what? What? <laughs> okay. Um, and then it's like it's like a whole it. bunch of ideas from like other fucking movies, like. Oh, Ben is just C three PO and Jar Jar smushed into one. It's horrible. Yeah. Fucking John Silver shows up like Mufasa, but like <laughs> horrible and creepy. <laughs> yep. it's so um, but that's pretty much it. I'm trying to check to see if I've got any more facts about it. Apparently, there were forty animators. I don't know if that's a lot, but forty of them. So. They worked really hard on this, and they spent a lot of money on this, and it didn't do very well. Um, Although, did you notice there was a weird quirk in the animation where the shape of Jim's face kept changing because they never wanted his um, they never wanted his eyes to go underneath his hair. So as he's like, as he look around, (laughs) his fucking face would keep moving in bizarre ways to try and avoid it. I didn't notice that. I did not notice that. As soon as I clocked it, I couldn't unsee it. Um, imagine if that happened in real life. How creepy would that your be? Your fucking eyeballs start moving. <laughs> start <laughs> moving around your face. It'd be like in a game when it gl- when the face glitches out and the eyes stay in a place, but the head moves. It's like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, um, imagine. What else? That's a nightmare about? reality. That. Uh, oh, only that. While only three of us, well, three people in the world own and the DVD. <laughs> it was number one for two weeks as DVD. Um, and it was the number one VHS for three weeks when it came out. I don't know how that compares to other films, but it was quite popular when it came See, out again. This is the weird but... thing because, right, Jake? Did you say that when you got Disney Plus, you this was one of the first things you watched when you went on there? Yeah, you're the fifth person to say that to me. Whoa. Oh, okay. So many people have been telling me that they've been like, "Oh yeah, um, you know what the first thing I watched? What Treasure Planet? Same." Like, even my sister, 
who is what five years younger than like me even she watched this first this film it's like no one liked it at the time and people still think that people don't like it, but everyone secretly likes it. It's really weird. It's really <laughs> that's, strange. That's the thing. It's it's weird. I don't get... I guess it just came out at the wrong time. I guess if they were to... Yeah. Even though it took them ages to get it made, and it took they were working on it for fucking ages as well. How many years was it? Only like five years. I'll say only. That's still quite a while. Yeah. If they'd... I don't know. There's just... Everything about it just feels like it's not quite perfectly executed even though they still took a lot of time over it it feels like was, yeah it just feels a little bit messy but has loads of cool fucking ideas in there the problem yeah. disney's got is that the the more um <clears throat> a lot of their modern movies the past couple of years since they switched to cg um they're getting messier and messier story-wise these movies are gorgeous i watched moana for the first time the other day it's great it's so beautiful um but the more complicated you get and more ambitious you get with the plot the more it stands out that it's like like frozen 2 is very ambitious plot and when you unlodge one little stone from it you notice one little plot hole the whole thing comes crumbling down like everything in it just doesn't make any sense because you have this problem of the animation once it's, it takes a long time and once it's done it's locked in so yeah. if you make a change to the script later you just have to live with that change and move on and i feel like you can see it in this a lot yeah um, yeah i'd agree um but uh, yeah i think that's pretty much it for the Sweet. treasure planet Okay, so what we're going to do now is going to go around in a circle and give any final thoughts we have on the movie and give it an individual score out of 10. And then I'm going to use maths to get an overall score out of 100 and see where it ranks on a list of the best to worst movies of all time. Amelia, kick us off. Cool. So, yeah, like I said at the beginning, me and my brother watched this film so many times as a kid. And I'm pretty sure we had the VHS, not a DVD of it, which is pretty crazy to think. But, like you say, I haven't watched this film for years. And so, like, coming back to it, I was just like, kid me, loved it, but I don't know if it still is my favourite thing as adult me. I don't know. Um, the nostalgia was still there, and I still enjoyed watching it. It's fun to watch. Um, but for me personally, I'm going to have to give this movie a six. Six. <laughs> Jacob? Um, yeah, I I like this movie. It's I really enjoy it. There's a lot about it. I like a lot of the ideas, but it's it just feels messy, as, as I've kind of said already. Um, I kind of wish to do make a, either a sequel or a live action or something more, but they return to this idea. Um, the thing is, though, from the era that it would have been made, I mean, you know what Disney sequels are like from that era, you know? Yeah. There's not a lot of good Disney sequels. Um, I don't know. I just... There's so much about it that they almost did something really great and they just didn't quite. Um, but I still enjoy it. I still think it's pretty good. I'm going to go seven. Seven. Joe? Um, I mean, right, if I watch this now, being... Like, new, like I hadn't seen it before, I would appreciate the... Um, the style that they went for, and I appreciate it, but I would understand, you know, it's it's not the best of mo- Disney movies, but I'm not watching it new now. I'm watching it for the thou- thousandth time now, and it's not great. It's got, it's many, you know, it's not perfect, but fucking hell, I love this film, like, so much. I was watching it the other day, I was watching it. Three times I've seen this film since Disney Plus came out. And each time I'm watching it, I'm like, oh, God, it's so good. I love it so much. I'm going to give it a nine, because I fucking love this film. Nice. <laughs> I love nice. it so much. Like, there's so yeah. many faults, but, God, like, my <laughs> entire childhood, like, my entire, like, especially, like, my entire childhood was being obsessed with pirates to a point where, like, I was actively, like, researching pirates all the time. I fucking love them so much. And it's because of this film. So yeah, I'm gonna give it a nine because I fucking love it. Wow, it's amazing. Uh, I'm sorry, Joe. I thought it was shit. I really <laughs> thought it was shit. <laughs> what does that mean? Watch it for the. Is this the first time you've watched it? No, no. Oh, um, okay. 
<laughs> no, I, I was really excited to watch it as a kid. I remember we borrowed the VHS when it came out. I did watch it a couple of times when I was little. Uh, I found it to be wholly unremarkable and unmemorable. Uh, it was showing me something kind of cool, and then it was out of my brain the next fucking second. It, the experience, I almost liken it to watching a Michael Bay movie. <laughs> Honestly. Ooh, that's harsh. Um, <laughs> that's very harsh. I, uh, I didn't think that... Uh, enough of the characters had anything going for them beyond like the mildest of um ambitions you know dobfrey doppler he's like oh i want to i've always wanted to go into space why no time for that now we've got jim's little map joke to do you know why can jim do the map no time for that now we've got dobfrey's little suit joke to do you know like it's just kind of like i don't know so I, i failed to get invested in everyone and look IRL, I've got some real fucking bad daddy issues, right? If you want to get me invested in a movie, this is the sort of plot you, you do. And I just didn't give a shit. I just didn't give a shit. It was, everything felt like it was trying so hard. Like his cool haircut and John Silver's cool arm that becomes a gun. And I think, oh, I can't. But it was cool, and the that's fucking, the thing. And the fucking, the pop rock song that, Tells the story of the. I used to love that song. Now, you know. I used to love that, you know. Awful. <laughs> um, the cool surfboarding that goes away just as fast. I don't like it. I don't like it. But it's not offensively bad. I don't think any of it's really any good, but it's not offensively bad. So I'm going straight down the middle and I'm giving it a five. Um, which gives it 67.5 out of 100, which means I have to start asking questions. Yeah. Amelia, <laughs> mm-hmm. Treasure Planet or Shin Godzilla? Shin Godzilla fucking confused me, so I'm going to go to <laughs> Treasure fair, Planet. Fair. Jacob? <laughs> Treasure Planet. Treasure uh, Planet. Yeah. Joe? Come on, do you have to ask? <laughs> <laughs> All right then. Obviously All right then, smart planet. ass. All right then. You can fucking you can get one over on me, right? But Treasure Planet or I Am Legend. Answer me that. Riddle me this. <laughs> Which one are you gonna pick now? <laughs> that one as well. Oh. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we're climbing. <laughs> Shit. Okay. I think I think I think I know. Amelia, start us off. We'll, we'll go in order again. I don't know because we. <laughs> I don't know how to judge this. Do I judge this in, like, my film theory head? Or do I judge it on, what the fuck am I going to sit down and watch again? (laughs) (laughs) Which do you enjoy more? I reckon that's the the simple question. I imagine it was good, but it stressed me out. (laughs) So I'm going to have to say Treasure Planet because it's more fun to watch. Jacob? Thankfully, I haven't got a film theory head to worry about. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's just Treasure Planet. I love right. it. Joe. Okay. Right. This is a difficult Ruined one. Ruined him. You've read, like, both the like, source material for both of I these have. as well. And between the two of them, right. If I'm going to do them based on the books, I-, I Am Legend's better than Treasure Island as a book. But I'm going to pick Treasure Planet because, as a film, I prefer Treasure Planet. Fair dues, fair dues. That officially makes Treasure Planet the 16th greatest movie of all well time. Done. What's above Very it? Good. What's 15th? My Neighbor Totoro. Oh, okay. Fair. Yeah, okay. Um, which brings us to the most important part of the show, and that's finding out what we're going to be watching next week. Joe, let us know. Okay, right. Well, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to ask all three of you to close your eyes because I had something prepared for this and I forgot to do it. So oh everyone, close God. your eyes. Oh, okay. Funny. Just turn your camera off. No, nah, no. Fucking... Yeah, cover, cover oh, okay. the thing. <laughs> oh no! Don't there turn you your camera off. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that was good. Oh, Can I help my eyes? Hang on, I don't know. I don't know. I'm closed as well now. Is this cock gonna be out when we open? This? <laughs> <laughs> I really go for that. You can open the titles right down the shaft. Right. What's going on? So, uh, right, this is what we want. Still not looking. So, can we open? Amelia, <laughs> so no one's what gonna open. Is, right. You. We're gonna carry on a certain theme from this week. Right. Disney. I mean, right. Disney. It's it, that's that doesn't really narrow it down, does it? But this week, next week, we're gonna be watching. 
Oh wait, is that gonna work? Cause it's backwards. It's Pirates of the Caribbean. I can't. Pirates of the Caribbean. Which yes. one? Ah, oh, see right. this. So this is the thing, right? I was looking going through. I'm like, which, which Pirates of the Caribbean do I want to watch? And I'm gonna have to pick my favorite one, which is Dead Man's Chest. So we're gonna watch yes! Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Man's Chest next week. Did you just take there that you off your wall? Was it yeah. Yeah. The whole time? yeah. It was there. And now it's gonna be a pain in the ass getting it back on. <laughs> I get a second try. Good enough. But That's going to fall. <laughs> yeah, it is. Oh, man. All right. Well, thanks very much for joining us on this little discussion about Treasure Planet. Uh, give us a like. Give us a subscribe. Let us know what you thought of the movie and the video in the comments down below. Follow us on social media, uh, Twitter and Instagram at The Real Outtakes. If you've watched us on video, you can find us on your favorite podcasting app by searching for The Outtakes Movie Podcast. Or if you've been listening to us and you want to look at our faces, you can check us out on the YouTube by searching for the same uh, I'd never know fucking what to say after that. Bye. I'm just gonna leave. Out. I'm just gonna go. <laughs> just gonna walk out. <laughs> Bye. Bye, everyone. <laughs> See, you know what you should do. Back, <laughs>